Brian, I will send you a vintage Pez dispenser if you win. <laughs> uh, yeah, it worked. worked. I'm just kidding. And empty, but it's still worth something. You know, let's look at how the um, how the revenue mix of a company is comprised, how it's generated, and let's diagnose it, and let's put ourselves in the shoes of a CRO, not not necessarily an individual contributor, salesperson, or marketer, but the person responsible for the revenue machine. And let's see what we can, um, you know, figure out. Center of gravity was right here in the middle where you see win. And we, and we built all of our machinery, all of our marketing machinery and all of our sales machinery to count those closed win deals and closed win dollars. So concept number one is it's not a funnel, it's a bow tie um, and both sides matter. Um, concept number two is something that I call stackable revenue. So. You know, if we want to stack revenue to the sky, which we do, and you're going to put yourselves in a CRO position in a minute, and that's going to be your challenge. You know, the most stackable go-to-market motion is PLG, and therefore I want it to be at the bottom. It's most stackable because creativity is basically not even an option when somebody is buying the product online. You know, I'm not negotiating with anyone. <laughs> like. Could you do this special thing for me? Who are you gonna ask? The product's just there. The pricing's just there. The use case is just there. The onboarding is just there. So by definition, it is consistent. It, and the processes and the economics are programmed right into the product. And if you can get that going, it's unstoppable and ultimately stackable. And we wanna get to a hundred million of total ARR today, we're sitting at 20. The faster we can get from 20 to hundred, the faster we can go public. And also by definition, the steeper our growth curve is, so we'll get a better valuation. But if you had 20 customers at 100,000 each, or even better, 200 customers at 10,000 each, now we're talking, now, now I know that you've tuned the machine, like you've gotten it to a place where it's repeatable and scalable. That is a company that I would invest in. I'm like, beautiful. But guess what they did last year? They hired five guys in suits because they thought, okay, time to scale. Like, no, wrong. Like 7,000 customers, that's amazing. You have a machine, like, let's figure out how to scale that thing. And the way to scale it is not to roll in the, you know, the Oracle execs as speaking as a former Oracle exec. <laughs> but if on the second step of activation, I'm having a huge fall off, you know, maybe there's something broken or maybe there's something unclear and I can see it in the metrics because I instrumented it with mix panel or with amplitude. I can see that I have a big problem there and I can fix it in the product. I don't fix it by parachuting in a CSM. I fix it by getting the product to be more intuitive. And so if that's our definition of PLG, to be customer centric and metrics driven all the way throughout the bow tie, not just in acquisition, but also in activation and monetization and expansion. How, why are these people getting to time to value quicker? Why are the ones that aren't churning? And then why the ones that expanded chose to expand? What problems are they going through? If we empower those outbound or inbound sellers with, oh, this person logged into the product, here they're starting to gain traction, they become a PQL. And then we go top down and try to educate those buyers on exactly uh, what problems they may not be quite aware of. So I'm, I would wanna run both a top down and bottom up motion slightly up market, personally. So I just think that we're having people push through a sales cycle that are saying, I guess I'll try it. And it's not what they thought it was. So what I would look into is better onboarding and implementation by having an LMS that helps people onboard and giving every customer a dedicated customer success manager. Because I think the easiest place to start is helping retention. And again, best way to do that, customer success. From there, I think we can actually increase the number of people moving into the product by creating a product-led growth model. We can develop partnerships with all the different real estate software companies and actually have our product embedded or directly integrated with their CRMs with all their different tech 
And as a result, it then becomes something that works in tandem on the more enterprise deals. But I would use CSM to figure out why that, that fall off is having and why the, the time to value is so slow. I'm going to return back to the beginning of the funnel to make sure that this is not an ICP issue. I'd rather not stack garbage in. I'd want to tighten that up. Um, the opportunity that we have today is to really fine tune this machine, like precision instrumentation all throughout the machine. Um, and yes, we've got humans and also we've got the product talk, sending us signal back.